in, um, in your website, I think you, you talk about the bike being a, a potential tool for change. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by that? Why kind of isolate a bike as an icon for change? It, it is a tool for change. <laughs> um, and we, we live in, a, in an era where we have a global crisis on climate, a global crisis on, on the planet's resources. Um, and, and the cities are growing all over the planet and and if they grow with more cars which they do in many many places nothing is working anymore so the cool thing with a bike is that everyone can use it and everybody can start using it today uh, you can have pub, I mean, public transport is very important but that's kind of takes 20 30 years to build a new you know it's like huge investments but the bike tomorrow do it and I like that kind of do-it-yourself uh, solutions to to the to global to global problems it's also and when you do an environmental film which is basically is well this film is environmental but it's also about city planning but again it's sometimes they, they become quite doomsday pessimistic these the, the environmental films and I, I don't, I'm not a pessimistic person, and I don't want my film to have that kind of pessimistic uh, look. But you, but in the story where you have somebody out there, you, of course you want to put as much load as possible on her shoulders, the main character. So we, so we feel that shit. She's up against the machine, and then it's good to you know. Then, but she's also doing something. So she's not lying on her bed crying. She's actually out there, and I think that's uh, that's inspirational. And and I also want to make films that people feel. I mean, I want to film. That, I want people to laugh and cry. And I mean, because, because film is an emotional uh, uh, art. And um, it's been fun. It's, I mean, it's then in every country the audience reacts differently. I mean, in the, in the U.S. or in in um, in the Latin America, people are shouting and crying and laughing. You know, it's, in London yesterday it was a little bit more, hmm, you know, <laughs> but people, maybe people feel a lot anyway. But it's 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 interesting to see when a and and the cool things with watching f docs together with a big audience is that you can really feel the audience and I I want to make films that that can move an audience I mean that's at least a challenge all the time and it's that's uh, if it works I'm happy so it's it's very nice to to see the film now travel to many many uh, special screenings or you know theaters around the world it's it's very cool when you said that you know it's important obviously for you that individuals can make a difference you know literally it's a kind of you know, one by one mm. um, but one thing which also kind of came through the film for me was that sense of isolation and time wasting of being in a car and queuing mm. etc i mean that kind of you know which we all absolutely love it's kind of you know mm. next to versus kind of you know, the pleasure of knowing that you know if you've only got 10 minutes to get to a place by bike you get there mm. you know. i mean do you think that i mean because you've got you know in sweden you have the green party kind of in the back in you i mean do you actually think that it's just individual solutions in terms of uh, if i take my bike therefore i'm empowering myself and therefore i'm imposing myself as a biker in the city or do you actually think that there is a need for city planners, for um, the hierarchy of politicians to get involved? No, I mean, I, I totally believe in politics and in, I believe in democracy. And I think that's the only way to change the planet. And, and, uh, and I believe in free press. I, I mean, I believe in these classical institutions, uh, um, but as I also talked about in Big Boys Gone Bananas, the people with the most money also invest a lot of money to pressure politics and move the, the public opinion. So I know that there are 
many, many city planners in many cities who knows what to do to make their cities better. The politicians are on a lot of pressures because the lobbyists, they, they lobby for their solutions and against solutions they don't like. So, they, so, so if more people go out there and use their bike, they'll show their presence on the streets. That is, will also help the good people sitting, you know, working on the, inside the cities. So, I mean, we all have to work on all levels, of course. Um, but I think change is, is coming and, and, um, and, and I see it coming. Also, over this short period I've been shooting, I can see it. It's a, it's a, it's a really, goes really quick. It has a relation to what this Professor Waldnick says in the film. Uh, the traffic jam is the solution. The traffic jam is the solution because we are at the point in history where, now, where the car is not delivering anymore. The private car is kind of dying. It's a dying, I mean, it's, there is no freedom connected to it, to it, with exception in the, I mean, in the car commercials, of course, there the freedom still exists like in a bubble, but not in reality. Um, and, and young and smart, creative people, they all want to go by bike. Because they're, I mean, young people are now more, they, they, work, they can work on the laptop, they can sit in a cafe and work, they can have their meetings. I mean, a lot of creative business, also, also business make a lot of money. People want to work that way. And, and for them, the car is so old fashioned. You know, why sit alone in the car? You can't do anything. And so the bicycle is totally their friend. And I think cities, who wants to be a part of this new world need to be more bike friendly and if you're not you will be on the wrong side in history i'm sure and i and i i, I know that when now when i'm traveling a lot with a film that a lot of cities understand this um, i was in colombia at the world bicycle forum it was like four thousand people from all over latin america i mean every major city in that continent said we want to be the best bicycle city on the continent and and I mean you have the same come up in on Europe and you know many different levels so so people know this but of course the car industry invests every day you put on your TV and you see a new car commercial which is a propaganda for a certain way of building cities so of course that machine is kind of overwhelmingly they're really really strong so um, I don't think I've seen a single advert on television for bicycles. No, because they don't have that money. It's too expensive, you know. So it's, and we also have to understand that that these superpowers, the oil industry, the car industry, the construction industry, huge, faceless companies, uh, bigger than nations. Um, they are they invest so much money in in lobby and in changing our minds and it's very hard to stand up against that for anyone and you know it's I mean it's also it's nothing it's nothing new it's been on for 50 60 years and I mean me as a Swede you know Volvo and Saab is like if something bad happens to them I I feel pain in my body Honestly, you know, it's like a part of me, those brands. Um, and it's the same then in many other countries have the same kind of relations to their, their industries. So it's, it's hard to change. But I mean, it's in, in my country, we, I mean, Volvo and Scania, they are the biggest truck and, uh, and bus brands on the planet. And they're really, really strong. And we have lousy public uh, railways, for example. Is there a relation? I think there is a relation, you know, because these companies are so strong. So, and it's not only the lobby, the right wing lobby, it's also the unions. It's also the local social democratic member of parliament, you know, and they all want the same. And that machine is so strong, so it's very hard to go against it. And that machine also changed uh, our cities and partly killed our cities and not only the cities 
also the countryside. So, I mean, the countryside now is more car dependent than ever. So if you live in the country, you need a car. It's not even an option. And in, at least in my country, you can't, it's, in many places it's very hard to even bike to your local shop because there is none. You have to travel further. So it's, it killed, the car also killed off the villages, you know. And um, so it, it's, a, it's a huge task for any country or region to, to change this. But I think, I think we have to, because this mod, the car model is not even creating happiness. You know, it's creating a lot of frustrations, talking about sitting in these lines all the time. And, I'm, and a car can be a tool for freedom, but not if you're forced to use it every day. And kind of, so the, the freedom is with the bicycles now.